Now today, <clears throat> we have a big challenge this weekend uh, versus Iowa. Second Big Ten game, first road game of the year. Uh, so excited about going on the road and, and the challenging environment and, uh, and playing our best football. So uh, every week we're trying to play our best football. So here's another opportunity to, to do just that. Any questions? Uh, I was wondering, is there anything you take away from you guys saw K and McNamara two years ago here? So, you, I mean, I know it's completely different teams and all that, but just from having faced them before, is there any carryover? Uh, not. Well, the offenses are different. You know, you, you can just watch how he throws the ball and those type of things, but it's the talent around them, it's different guys, you know, it's just different people. So, um, other than watching his mechanics of throwing and all that, not a whole lot to get out of that, if I'm honest with you. And, and, and uh, so, that, that's the feeling on that. Yeah, good player. We just saw you at 7 o'clock Saturday, but what have you learned about that game and your team in the last 41 hours? So, we, we talked about today, Jack, um, about pit the penalties. So, went from 11 to 6, okay? Uh, so, we showed, we showed those. Uh, then we talked about um, the missed opportunities. Missed out. We had some missed opportunities to make plays, offense, defense, and special teams. Then we, then the last thing, uh, ending positively, we said things we can build on. So uh, things that we did well, we can build on, and that's what we watched today. So we're close. We're, we're very, very close. And uh, I was, I told them at the practice today, I really like this team. They're, they just keep moving forward. They're, they're, they were energized today at practice. They were running. You know. If you, Guys, you know, not talking about, uh, you know, other things outside of football, just locked in on what we have to do for football players. What were some of those things you saw that you can build on and why? Good. So, interception. Uh, uh, Angelo Gross got an interception. That's something to build on, and that's two interceptions in a row, just thinking positively. The week before, Jaden Mangum had an interception. Uh, we, showed, we showed where we were one block away from a big, I mean, a huge kickoff return. Um, and, and it was it was it was there. Um, building on uh, the the, the pass, uh, uh, Jerron Glover caught from Noah down the middle. That was an explosive play. They can build on that. He put it on target uh, a lot of times, and, uh, and we were making plays. So uh, those type of things like that. We had a, a punt that was a, had great hang time. And we had great coverage. He had the fair catch. So you can build on those type of things. And so uh, our guys see it. We're right there. We're we're sowing, you keep sowing, sowing, sowing seeds, it's time for us to reap. We're going to reap here soon. Hey, Ron. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a two-part question, so bear with me for a second. You talk about after the game, um, the conversation with your team, with the team about being all in and what they said. Uh, we were just with JD and we talked about that. I want to take you back in time a little bit to your 87 team that happened to be, at this time in the season, you guys were 2-2 two and two after win over Iowa. So, you have any memory of what that experience was like right around that time when you're on the cusp? And secondly, JD talked about how these guys want to really win the game for you. And what does that mean to you? Oh, so first of all, playing up at Iowa in 87, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind thinking about that, I remember us talking about it was a noon game. It's crazy, I remember all this. A noon game. Because we talked about how the sun came up. Uh, over the stadium at noon, right around noon. So when they when a punt happened, we wanted to, we wanted to get the ball to punt it a certain way. I remember all of that, and it could get in the guys' eyes and fumble. So y'all check me on this. We punted the ball to them the direction we wanted at the time it was, and guy he fumbled, he muffed the ball, and we got the ball. Check me on that. Check me on that. I remember that very vividly. Um, so that's what I remember. I was going to Iowa. Uh, to play my very first time up there playing. Uh, really, really great uh, place to play, great venue. Um, as far as JD saying winning for me, I, I want us to, to win for Spartan Nation. Uh, we all win for, for each other. And uh, and that's, I appreciate it, but it's not it's not about me. And it never will be. It's not about me. It's about us, and that's how it always will be. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Carlin, you had uh, home cooking here for four straight weeks. Can a road trip, especially under the circumstances, galvanize a team at all? I think so. Uh, not not that we're preaching that, but I think so, Fred, because this, this all we have is all we got right here. You know, we, we can come together close. We flying up, you know, all on bus rides, 
then get back on the plane together. We're closer, longer, if that makes sense. We're together around each other in a more intimate fashion on the road than you are a lot of times when you're at home. And so uh, excited about this, uh, this, this, this trip, this road trip to a very hostile environment. I told them though, it's still 11 on 11. I mean, the fans are out there, but it's still 11. They, they're not playing, all right? So if you don't get caught up in that, then you're good. I always used to love to play on the road personally. Um, so it, it should be a lot of fun. And we, we, we enjoy the, the atmosphere, enjoy Big Ten football for what it is. Uh, it's a one-time deal, uh, meaning to play it, I know four years, four or five years you can play, but it's a one-time, lifetime experience of playing college football. Enjoy it, enjoy it. I'm also wondering, you know, the shock of a, a coach leaving is kind of old news to the players now, isn't it? I mean, do you sense they're still adjusting to new leadership, or is, is that in the past? I, I think it's in the past. Uh, they, they, you all heard uh, J.D. up here, I think, earlier today, and they, you, you see them, uh, that's how they all are. I mean, they've all um, accepted what it is for what it is and have moved on and ready to go out and compete. And that's why I'm excited about this team. I, I still, I told them today, I love this team. I love this team. Uh, you know, guys could have said, I'm shutting it down, I'm done, and we haven't had any of that. And so I said, y'all, true Spartan dogs. That's what I told them today. That's y'all, keep fighting through, keep pushing, and it's going to turn. This thing is going to turn. I know you talked about some of the positive uh, from uh, Saturday's game. I was wondering, you know, defensively, specifically in the second half, you know, going getting down 21-0, you know, the turnovers that put the defense in a bad situation. Uh, I guess more specifically what you saw defensively to build on and, you know, going to Iowa where they had 76 yards, I believe, in the best game. I saw a group of guys that, that started believing that, hey, we do have a good deal. They, they knew it at one time, but you know, then got a little setback, I think, in their own minds. But as they kept playing on Saturday, um, they, they said, we do have a, a good defense. I, I kept telling them when they came back from the sideline in the second half, I said, that's defense. That's defense. They just kept saying that. No, that's defense. We get, we playing great defense, first, second down, third down, getting off the field. That's defense. And so they, they, they were excited about that um, and, and still want to finish the game. Got to finish. Um, but there's, that is definitely something to build on. Um, you played all three quarterbacks in the game. And I'm wondering what, when you look at the film of those three guys, what did you see and did what you see impact anything in terms of your plan for this week with those three guys? Uh, no, we're, we're going to stick with our hobby, how we have it right now. We're going to be in our quarterback. Um, you know, he, you see the, the, the glaring things, the interceptions. But he did some. He put some balls on the money, man. Where guys got to make those plays. And uh, I like the nice run. I like him running a little bit. Personally, that's just me. All right. But we'll see if that if that can happen. Cause he's fast, you know. So he can he can put pressure on the defense or uh, running the football as well. And then Caden came in and, and 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 did his job and did what he what we asked him to do and try to come in and help us. And I thought it was good to get Sam in there and get some get some minutes. Uh, and, and get a feel. So, but right now we're, we're going to be status quo. If that changes, we'll let you let you guys know. There's been a lot of conversation about Jordan Hall and his leadership. For a true freshman to be able to step up and lead in that way during this time, what can you say about him and just maybe how he's been such a pivotal force in, in this? That's that's who he is. Like, so he was a three-time captain at IMG. Just think about that. He was a three-time captain at IMG. That's where all the stars go, right? And they all play down there. Uh, he's a leader. He's a natural born leader, extremely intelligent. He understands, he cares, and uh, and, and, and that's, what it is. that's what it is for him. That's just who he is as a person, uh, a natural leader um, and that doesn't mind speaking up, uh, saying the right things and doing the right things. So uh, we're, we're, we're excited that he's here with us and on our team and playing for us. You know, he did a good job out there as a true freshman playing on a Saturday and so did Chance Rucker as well. Can I follow up with something real quick with him? I mean, how important is that going to be as you go to a place like Kinnick Stadium to have a, a player like Jordan Hall? They're very important. It'll be his first time and like, you know, <laughs> I hope, I, that's why I keep saying, I'm going to keep saying it's 11 on 11. It's 11 on 11 because it's going to be a night game up there. They, they have a great fan base. They do a great job of with the crowd noise and all that kind of stuff. And just stay focused on 11 on 11. I think he can, but still, it's a first time experience going there. So you, you look around a little bit, you know, and you got to be locked in and focused and, and go get the job done. 
Uh, Iowa's offense for, for a couple of years has been struggling to score points. I'm just wondering where you sort of see maybe where, where some of their issues are, I guess, as, you know, as far as you can go there. And also, you know, just, just part of your message or, or your thinking this week, like, don't let us be the one that lets them heat up. Or, you know, do you see them on the cusp of turning a corner or making sure that, you know, we're not the team they turn a corner on? Type of sound? I got you. First, I'm never going to tell you what I think their issues are. <laughs> I, I don't know. That. They don't have issues. They're really, really good, right? Uh, but no, seriously, um, uh, Coach Ferentz, who I, who I know uh, from back in Cleveland Brown days, is a great dude, great coach, great offensive line coach. Um, and and they, they pride themselves on running the football. And so we're going to have to be able to you know, stop the run. That's a, this is every week, stop the run. And then also uh, control the passing game. We're going to uh, put together a plan that uh, we hope will allow us to do just that, you know what I mean? So uh, we, we know they're a tough team, especially at home, and uh, don't pay attention to what you've seen in the past. You know, each game is a new game. It has a life of its, uh, life of its own, so we're, we're, we're taking them very, very seriously. The last time we were up there, we got our butts kicked, so we're, we're taking them very, very seriously. I guess as, as a coach, when a team's struggling in a certain area, does, does that sort of break your ears up, though? Like, maybe it's, you know, they like pop it off and – turn things around, you know, does that become more, I guess, top of mind with that? Uh, not necessarily, because we, we're, we're, we're focused on ourselves <laughs> trying to just play well down after down, series after series. So we're just really about us trying to just play better football consistently. <laughs> and uh, and that's, that's where the focus is. Okay. After, uh, you know, two losses, I guess the natural instinct, I guess, from the outside is to make, you know, massive changes also. So it sounds like you kind of want to stay the course why is that? Why do you maintain the status quo essentially? Because you see, like I said, the miss ops. You see where that close. It's not like way big old gap where nah, this guy needs to be out. Of here. You see, you see it on film as you watch the film very closely, and so you know we're there. We're there. We just have to start making those plays uh, as the games go on and do them do it consistently. And I, I, like I said, you know, you you, you sow, you sow, you sow. Eventually, it's the time to reap the harvest. So we're going to reap the harvest here very, very soon. Probably in the back. You've not been the guy everyone's kind of looking at for the past couple of weeks. I guess, do you feel like things have slowed down in your world a little bit where you're now more in like a normal week-to-week -week operation at practice, especially? Yes, I'm, I'm getting, yeah, exactly right. Getting more comfortable doing this. It, it is a, a change. It was a big change. And so just getting comfortable and, and just doing it my way, you know, doing it, being me. I can't be anybody else. I'm only Harlan Barnett, so uh, that's how I have to operate. I'm not trying to operate like anybody else. And in doing so, I think with anything, you have to you have to catch a rhythm. I've said this before, and just like you know, you back there doing the camera, or whatever, you have to catch a rhythm how to do this. And you know, you catch that once you catch that rhythm of it, then you know how to flow with it, and everything goes smooth from there. In my opinion. In that regard, Harlan, how much are you enjoying this? It's not a loaded question. You don't enjoy losing. But you've waited for this for a long time. How much do you enjoy coming to work and trying to get this thing right? I, I love it. I love it. Um, and it's, it's at you know alma mater, and, and I love this place. I said that before. Anybody knows me knows that. So I'm, I'm loving it, Fred. It's, we just gotta get in, 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 get, get some W's. But but um, that's that's the focus and that's the, the goal to get it done and help these guys keep getting better and better and better. So, but I'm loving it. I really am. It's two things. Uh, you said Saturday you had a chance to really see what happened on the fake punt, and then you had a shank punt, and you had a really special teams a situation. What happened on that fake punt? We had a, we had a guy that ran too far up the field. He's supposed to set it down, okay, and then he would the guy would have punted the ball. He saw that we were up the field. The guy gets pushed up the field that had that contained, and they he, he took off for the run. So we had it. We, we saw it, it was, it was planned. Guy, just discipline, discipline, discipline. So that was a discipline thing. Your first year here was Phil's senior season mm -hmm. for George. What is it about his defense that allows them to be as perplexing to offenses and how do they intercept so many passes in that zone? <coughs> well, uh, that's, that's pretty much all they do. So when it's all you do, you can lock in on, on people because you, you know all the adjustments. I, I, there's a saying I say, sometimes a uh, coach can be having this defense or offense, for that matter, but defense, learning defense as opposed to defending offense. 
So they're defending offense because they, they know the defense by the, like the back of their hand. So they're 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 steady defending offense. They look at different different certain formations mean this. Uh, certain things the quarterback doing this or a certain lineman. They look at all that because the defense is like, hey, we're doing what we do for the most part. And so I think that's that's what has made them very successful consistently throughout the, the years. I was wondering if you think uh, if you anticipate getting any guys back and being healthier this Saturday, whether it's Chuck or Chris or Jacoby or your two backup running backs or <laughs> um, your other man who, who was injured on Saturday. Uh, um, any of those guys you anticipate? Day to day. <laughs> but I, we should be getting some guys back, hopefully. Um, you just mentioned it doing it your way. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Some of the notable changes, notable differences. Notable changes and differences. Well, doing it my way is not a. So I mean, just being who I am when I said that initially about doing it my way. You, I can't. I don't think come in and just change up everything. But we're in the midst of the season, so a lot of it I tried to keep as as normal as possible. But I mentioned this before, like we had the practice now, we used to do that with Coach D, so we do, that's something that we do differently. We dress every player uh, on home games. That's something that we, that's a little different. Um, we, we moved, um, so this past Friday, we moved, we moved chapel to Saturday mornings as opposed to Friday nights. And we used to do it on Saturdays uh, of the game before. So that's, I like that. But I, and I also installed a what we call a team bonding on Saturday evening. I mean Friday, excuse me, Friday evenings after dinner. Just like they have a speaker come in. I got a speaker come in this week, and he did a great job. And we we'll have somebody else come in and speak this week. So you get a combination of a Friday Saturday deal. But that's the some of the things that, that I've done. Uh, but nothing too crazy where they feel like what's going on. You know why I change the schedule up too much. Uh, I'm wondering, with, uh, what was Chance the guy that you, you guys went with in that spot, and then how do you think he went, or how do you, how do you rate out and you, your evaluation in that first game? Absolutely. So he was the guy, believe it or not, he was the guy going into the first game. Uh, Coach Salgado felt that good about him, and, uh, and he's a talented young man. He ended up getting hurt the week of that first game, so it didn't work out for him to be the guy in there as the, as the first guy. Um, and then we just... After after uh, some injuries uh, last week, we said we're going with him. Let's go. Put him out there, you know. And and, and, and uh, he did a good job. So now you just keep playing like that. Confidence grows, and he'll just keep getting better and better and better. But he's he's a really good football player, very talented, long can run. He has to get a little bit stronger, but that'll come. And when he does, watch out. Uh, how much do you? Have to kind of balance, you know, taking care of the goals in the here and now, with also kind of setting yourselves up for the future, the program for the future. Well, like you said, the here and now is what we have to have to deal with. Um, we're trying to, uh, we're doing our best at, because um, because if we handle here and now, that's going to help the future, obviously, right? So we we have to just handle here and now and focus on that. As far as the future is concerned, when I, when I hear you say future, I'm thinking recruiting, and uh, and you have to also balance that as well by you know continuing to let them know that guys are working hard. We're, we're, we're going to eventually make this thing happen, and make, and then they'll feel comfortable. I think with us getting on a roll and winning games and things like that. So that's that's what I think future. That's what I'm thinking. Other than that, it's all focused on the here and now. How about even choice and personnel though? I mean, maybe getting some guys looks that you know you may want to see, you know, obviously two or three years down the road. I got you. I got you. Whoever can help us win, that's what that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use whoever can help us win ball games. So uh, everybody is wide open to being able to play and that's that's the mindset. Any other questions for coach? All right. All right. Thank you guys. You're bringing not very far.